The Colony of Virginia, chartered in 1606 and settled in 1607, was the first enduring English colony in North America, following failed proprietary attempts at settlement on Newfoundland by Sir Humphrey Gilbert in 1583, and the subsequent further south Roanoke Island modern eastern North Carolina by Sir Walter Raleigh in the late 1580s. The founder of the new colony was the Virginia Company, with the first two settlements in Jamestown on the north bank of the James River and Popham Colony on the Kennebec River in modern-day Maine, both in 1607. The Popham Colony quickly failed due to a famine, disease, and conflict with local Native American tribes in the first two years. Jamestown occupied land belonging to the Powhatan Confederacy, and was also at the brink of failure before the arrival of a new group of settlers and supplies by ship in 1610. Tobacco became Virginia's first profitable export, the production of which had a significant impact on the society and settlement patterns. In 1624, the Virginia Company's charter was revoked by King James I, and the Virginia colony was transferred to royal authority as a crown colony. After the English Civil War in the 1640s and 50s, the Virginia colony was nicknamed the Old Dominion by King Charles II for its perceived loyalty to the English monarchy during the era of the Protectorate and Commonwealth of England, from 1619 to 1775–1776, the colonial legislature of Virginia was the House of Burgesses, which governed in conjunction with a colonial governor. Jamestown on the James River remained the capital of the Virginia colony until 1699, from 1699 until its dissolution the capital was in Williamsburg. The colony experienced its first major political turmoil with Bacon's Rebellion of 1676. After declaring independence from the Kingdom of Great Britain in 1775, before the Declaration of Independence was officially adopted, the Virginia colony became the Commonwealth of Virginia, one of the original 13 states of the United States, adopting as its official slogan, The Old Dominion. The entire modern states of West Virginia, Kentucky, Indiana and Illinois, and portions of Ohio and western Pennsylvania were later created from the territory encompassed, or claimed by, the colony of Virginia at the time of further American independence in July 1776. <laughs> Names and etymology <laughs> Virginia The name, Virginia, is the oldest designation for English claims in North America. In 1584, Sir Walter Raleigh sent Philip Amadas and Arthur Barlow to explore what is now the North Carolina coast, and they returned with word of a regional king named Wingina, who ruled a land supposedly called Wingandakoa. The name Virginia for a region in North America may have been originally suggested by Sir Walter Raleigh, named for Queen Elizabeth I, in approximately 1584. In addition the term Wingandakoa may have influenced the name Virginia. On his next voyage, Raleigh learned that while the chief of the Sakotans was indeed called Wingina, the expression Wingandakoa heard by the English upon arrival actually meant what good clothes you wear, in Carolina Algonquian, and was not the name of the country as previously misunderstood. Virginia was originally a term used to refer to North America's entire eastern coast from the 34th parallel close to Cape Fear north to 48th parallel. This area included a large section of Canada and the shores of Acadia. The colony was also known as the Virginia Colony, the Province of Virginia, and occasionally as the Dominion and Colony of Virginia or His Majesty's Most Ancient Colony and Dominion of Virginia. <laughs> Topic. Old Dominion. In gratitude for the loyalty of Virginians to the Crown during the English Civil War, Charles II gave it the title of Old Dominion. The colony seal stated from Latin, Behold, Virginia gives the fifth, with Virginia claimed as the fifth English dominion after England, France, Scotland and Ireland. The state of Virginia maintains Old Dominion as its state nickname. The athletic teams of the University of Virginia are known as the Cavaliers referring to supporters of Charles II, and Virginia has another state public university called Old Dominion University. History Although Spain, France, Sweden, and the Netherlands all had competing claims to the region, none of these prevented the English from becoming the first European power to colonize successfully the mid-Atlantic coastline. 
Earlier attempts had been made by the Spanish in what is now Georgia San Miguel de Galdape, 1526–27, several Spanish missions in Georgia between 1568 and 1684, South Carolina Santa Elena, 1566–87, North Carolina Jora, 1567–68 and Virginia a Jacon mission, 1570–71, and by the French in South Carolina Charlesfort, 1562–63. Farther south, the Spanish colony of Spanish Florida, centered on St. Augustine, was established in 1565, while to the north, the French were establishing settlements in what is now Canada Charlesbourg Royal briefly occupied 1541–43, Port Royal, established in 1605. <laughs> Elizabethan colonization attempts in the New World 1584–1590 In 1585, Sir Walter Raleigh sent his first colonization mission to the island of Roanoke in present-day North Carolina, with over 100 male settlers. However, when Sir Francis Drake arrived at the colony in summer 1586, the colonists opted to return to England, due to lack of supply ships, abandoning the colony. Supply ships arrived at the now abandoned colony later in 1586. Fifteen soldiers were left behind to hold the island, however, no trace of these men was later found. In 1587, Raleigh sent another group to again attempt to establish a permanent settlement. The expedition leader, John White, returned to England for supplies that same year but was unable to return to the colony due to war between England and Spain. When he finally did return in 1590, he found the colony abandoned. The houses were intact, but the colonists had completely disappeared. Although there are a number of theories about the fate of the colony, it remains a mystery and has come to be known as the Lost Colony. Two English children were born in this colony, the first was named Virginia Dare, Dare County, North Carolina, was named in honor of the baby, who was among those whose fate is unknown. The word Croatoan was found carved into a tree, the name of a tribe on a nearby island. Virginia Company 1606 Following the failure of the previous colonization attempts, England resumed attempts to set up a number of colonies. This time joint stock companies were used rather than giving extensive grants to a landed proprietor such as Gilbert or Raleigh. Topic. Charter of 1606 Creation of London and Plymouth Companies King James granted a proprietary charter to two competing branches of the Virginia Company, which were supported by investors. These were the Plymouth Company and the London Company. By the terms of the charter, the Plymouth Company was permitted to establish a colony of 100 miles 160 kilometers square between the 38th parallel and the 45th parallel roughly between Chesapeake Bay and the current U.S. Canada border. The London Company was permitted to establish between the 34th parallel and the 41st parallel approximately between Cape Fear and Long Island Sound, and also owned a large portion of Atlantic and Inland Canada. In the area of overlap, the two companies were not permitted to establish colonies within 100 miles of each other. During 1606, each company organized expeditions to establish settlements within the area of their rights. The London Company formed Jamestown in its exclusive territory, whilst the Plymouth Colony formed the Popham Colony in its exclusive territory near what is now Phippsburg, Maine. Topic: <laughs> Jamestown and the London Company. The London Company hired Captain Christopher Newport to lead its expedition. On December 20, 1606, he set sail from England with his flagship, the Susan Constant, and two smaller ships, the Godspeed, and the Discovery, with 105 men and boys, plus 39 sailors. After an unusually long voyage of 144 days, they arrived at the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay and came ashore at the point where the southern side of the bay meets the Atlantic Ocean, an event that has come to be called the first landing. They erected a cross and named the point of land Cape Henry, in honor of Henry Frederick, Prince of Wales, the eldest son of King James. Their instructions were to select a location inland along a waterway where they would be less vulnerable to the Spanish or other Europeans also seeking to establish colonies. They sailed westward into the bay and reached the mouth of Hampton Roads, stopping at a location now known as Old Point Comfort. Keeping the shoreline to their right, they then ventured up the largest river, which they named the James, for their king. 
After exploring at least as far upriver as the confluence of the Appomattox River at present-day Hopewell, they returned downstream to Jamestown Island, which offered a favorable defensive position against enemy ships and deep water anchorage adjacent to the land. Within two weeks they had constructed their first fort and named their settlement Jamestown, in addition to securing gold and other precious minerals to send back to the waiting investors in England. The survival plan for the Jamestown colonists depended upon regular supplies from England and trade with the Native Americans. The location they selected was largely cut off from the mainland and offered little game for hunting, no fresh drinking water, and very limited ground for farming. Captain Newport returned to England twice, delivering the first supply and the second supply missions during 1608, and leaving the discovery for the use of the colonists. However, death from disease and conflicts with the natives Americans took a fearsome toll of the colonists. Despite attempts at mining minerals, growing silk, and exporting the native Virginia tobacco, no profitable exports had been identified, and it was unclear whether the settlement would survive financially. Topic. Powhatan Confederacy The Powhatan Confederacy was a confederation of numerous linguistically related tribes in the eastern part of Virginia. The Powhatan Confederacy controlled a territory known as Senecomica, which roughly corresponded with the Tidewater region of Virginia. It was in this territory that the English established Jamestown. At the time of the English arrival, the Powhatan were led by the paramount chief Wahunzanaka. Topic. Popham Colony and Plymouth Company On May 31, 1607, about 100 men and boys left England for what is now Maine. Approximately three months later, the group landed on a wooded peninsula where the Kennebec River meets the Atlantic Ocean and began building Fort St. George. By the end of the year, due to limited resources, half of the colonists returned to England. Late the next year, the remaining 45 sailed home, and the Plymouth Company fell dormant. Topic. Charter of 1609 The London Company expands In 1609, with the abandonment of the Plymouth Company settlement, the London Company's Virginia Charter was adjusted to include the territory north of the 34th parallel and south of the 39th parallel, with its original coastal grant extended from sea to sea. Thus, at least according to James I's writ, the Virginia colony in its original sense extended to the coast of the Pacific Ocean, in what is now California, with all the states in between Kentucky, Missouri, Colorado, Utah, etc. belonging to Virginia. For practical purposes, though, the colonists rarely ventured far inland to what was known as the Virginia Wilderness. Although the concept itself helped renew the interest of investors, and additional funds enabled an expanded effort, known as the Third Supply. 1609 Third Supply and Bermuda For the Third Supply, the London Company had a new ship built. The sea venture was specifically designed for emigration of additional colonists and transporting supplies. It became the flagship of the Admiral of the Convoy, Sir George Summers. The Third Supply was the largest to date, with eight other ships joining the sea venture. The new captain of the Sea Venture was the mission's vice admiral, Christopher Newport. Hundreds of new colonists were aboard the ships. However, weather was to drastically affect the mission. A few days out of London, the nine ships of the Third Supply Mission encountered a massive hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean. They became separated during the three days the storm lasted. Admiral Summers had the new Sea Venture, carrying most of the supplies of the mission, deliberately driven aground onto the reefs of Bermuda to avoid sinking. However, while there was no loss of life, the ship was wrecked beyond repair, stranding its survivors on the uninhabited archipelago, to which they laid claim for England. The survivors at Bermuda eventually built two smaller ships and most of them continued on to Jamestown, leaving a few on Bermuda to secure the claim. The company's possession of Bermuda was made official in 1612, when the third and final charter extended the boundaries of Virginia far enough out to sea to encompass Bermuda. Bermuda has since been known officially also as the Summers Isles in commemoration of Admiral Summers. The shareholders of the Virginia Company spun off a second company, the Summers Isles Company, which administered Bermuda from 1615 to 1684. Upon their arrival at Jamestown, the survivors of the sea venture discovered that the 10-month delay had greatly aggravated other adverse conditions. 
Seven of the other ships had arrived carrying more colonists, but little in the way of food and supplies. Combined with a drought, and hostile relations with the Native Americans, the loss of the supplies that had been aboard the Sea Venture resulted in the starving time in late 1609 to May 1610, during which over 80% of the colonists perished. Conditions were so adverse it appears, from skeletal evidence, that the survivors engaged in cannibalism. The survivors from Bermuda had brought few supplies and food with them, and it appeared to all that Jamestown must be abandoned and it would be necessary to return to England. Topic. Abandonment and fourth supply Samuel Argyll was the captain of one of the seven ships of the third supply that had arrived at Jamestown in 1609 after becoming separated from the Sea Venture, whose fate was unknown. Depositing his passengers and limited supplies, he returned to England with word of the plight of the colonists at Jamestown. The king authorized another leader, Thomas West, 3rd Baron de la War, later better known as Lord Delaware to have greater powers, and the London Company organised another supply mission. They set sail from London on April 1, 1610. Just after the survivors of the starving time and those who had joined them from Bermuda had abandoned Jamestown, the ships of the new supply mission sailed up the James River with food, supplies, a doctor, and more colonists. Lord Delaware was determined that the colony was to survive, and he intercepted the departing ships about 10 miles 16 kilometers downstream of Jamestown. The colonists thanked Providence for the colony's salvation. West proved far harsher and more belligerent toward the Indians than any of his predecessors, engaging in wars of conquest against them. He first sent Gates to drive off the Kikautan from their village on July 9, 1610, then gave Chief Powhatan an ultimatum to either return all English subjects and property, or face war. Powhatan responded by insisting that the English either stay in their fort or leave Virginia. Enraged, de la War had the hand of a Paspe captive cut off and sent him to the Paramount Chief with another ultimatum, return all English subjects and property, or the neighboring villages would be burned. This time, Powhatan did not even respond. Topic. First Anglo-Powhatan War 1610-1614, John Rolfe and Pocahontas On August 9, 1610, tired of waiting for a response from Powhatan, West sent George Percy with 70 men to attack the Paspe capital, burning the houses and cutting down their cornfields. They killed 65 to 75, and captured one of Wauenchapunk's wives and her children. Returning downstream, the English threw the children overboard and shot out their brains in the water. The Queen was put to the sword in Jamestown. The Paspe never recovered from this attack and abandoned their town. Another small force sent with Samuel Argyll against the Wariscoyaks found that they had already fled, but he destroyed their abandoned village and cornfields as well. This event triggered the First Anglo-Powhatan War. Among the individuals who had briefly abandoned Jamestown was John Rolfe, a Sea Venture survivor who had lost his wife and son in Bermuda. He was a businessman from London who had some untried seeds for new, sweeter strains of tobacco with him, as well as some untried marketing ideas. It would turn out that John Rolfe held the key to the colony's economic success. By 1612, Rolfe's new strains of tobacco had been successfully cultivated and exported, establishing a first cash crop for export. Plantations and new outposts sprung up, initially both upriver and downriver along the navigable portion of the James, and thereafter along the other rivers and waterways of the area. The settlement at Jamestown could finally be considered permanently established. A period of peace followed the marriage in 1614 of colonist John Rolfe to Pocahontas, the daughter of Algonquian chief Powhatan. Topic: <laughs> Second Anglo-Powhatan War, 1622 to 1632. Topic: <laughs> Indian Massacre of 1622. The relations with the natives took a turn for the worse after the death of Pocahontas in England and the return of John Rolfe and other colonial leaders in May 1617. Disease, poor harvests and the growing demand for tobacco lands caused hostilities to escalate. After Wahunzanakuf's death in 1618, he was soon succeeded by his own younger brother, Apechankanuf. 
He maintained friendly relations with the colony on the surface, negotiating with them through his warrior Nematanu, but by 1622, after Nematanu had been slain, Apechankanuf was ready to order a limited surprise attack on them, hoping to persuade them to move on and settle elsewhere. Chief Apechankanuf organized and led a well-coordinated series of surprise attacks on multiple English settlements along both sides of a 50-mile long stretch of the James River, which took place early on the morning of March 22, 1622. This event came to be known as the Indian Massacre of 1622 and resulted in the deaths of 347 colonists including men, women, and children and the abduction of many others. The massacre caught most of the Virginia colony by surprise and virtually wiped out several entire communities, including Henricus and Wollstenholme Town at Martin's Hundred. Jamestown was spared from destruction, however, due to a Virginia Indian boy named Chanko who, after learning of the planned attacks from his brother, gave warning to colonist Richard Pace with whom he lived. Pace, after securing himself and his neighbors on the south side of the James River, took a canoe across river to warn Jamestown, which narrowly escaped destruction, although there was no time to warn the other settlements. A year later, Captain William Tucker and Dr. John Potts worked out a truce with the Powhatan and proposed a toast using liquor laced with poison. Two hundred Virginia Indians were killed or made ill by the poison and fifty more were slaughtered by the colonists. For over a decade, the English settlers killed Powhatan men and women, captured children and systematically razed villages, seizing or destroying crops. By 1634, a six-mile-long palisade was completed across the Virginia Peninsula. The new palisade provided some security from attacks by the Virginia Indians for colonists farming and fishing lower on the peninsula from that point. On April 18, 1644, Apechankanuf again tried to force the colonists to abandon the region with another series of coordinated attacks, killing almost 500 colonists. However, this was a much less devastating portion of the growing population than had been the case in the 1622 attacks. The forces of Royal Governor of Virginia William Berkeley captured the old warrior in 1646, variously thought to be between 90 and 100 years old. In October, while a prisoner, a Pechankanuf was killed by a soldier shot in the back assigned to guard him. Topic: <laughs> Crown Colony 1624 to 1652. In 1620, a successor to the Plymouth Company sent colonists to the New World aboard the Mayflower. Known as Pilgrims, they successfully established a settlement in what became Massachusetts. The portion of what had been Virginia north of the 40th parallel became known as New England, according to books written by Captain John Smith, who had made a voyage there. In 1624, the charter of the Virginia Company was revoked by King James I and the Virginia colony was transferred to royal authority in the form of a crown colony. Subsequent charters for the Maryland colony in 1632 and to the eight lords proprietor of the province of Carolina in 1663 and 1665 further reduced the Virginia colony to roughly the coastal borders it held until the American Revolution. The exact border with North Carolina was disputed until surveyed by William Byrd II in 1728. Topic: Third Anglo-Powhatan War, 1644 to 1646. After twelve years of peace following the Indian Wars of 1622–1632, another Anglo-Powhatan War began on March 18, 1644, as a last effort by the remnants of the Powhatan Confederacy, still under a Pechankanuf, to dislodge the English settlers of the Virginia colony. Around 500 colonists were killed, but that number represented a relatively low percent of the overall population, as opposed to the earlier massacre the 1622 attack had wiped out a third, that of 1644 barely a tenth. However, Apechankanuf, still preferring to use Powhatan tactics, did not make any major follow-up to this attack. This was followed by a last effort by the settlers to decimate the Powhatan. In July, they marched against the Pamunkey, Chickahominy, and Powhatan proper, and south of the James, against the Appomattox, Wayanoke, Warriscoyuk, and Nanzamond, as well as two Carolina tribes, the Chowanok and Sakotan. In February 1645, the colony ordered the construction of three frontier forts, Fort Charles at the Falls of the James, Fort James on the Chickahominy, and Fort Royal at the Falls of the York. In August, Governor William Berkeley stormed Apechankano's stronghold and captured him. 
All captured males in the village over age 11 were deported to Tangier Island. Apechenkanuf, around 92 years old, was taken to Jamestown where he was shot in the back by a guard. Apechenkano's death resulted in the disintegration of the Powhatan Confederacy into its component tribes, whom the colonists continued to attack. In March 1646, the colony decided to build a fourth frontier fort, Fort Henry, at the falls of the Appomattox, where the modern city of Petersburg is located. Topic: <laughs> Treaty of 1646. In the Peace Treaty of October 1646, the New Waroans, Nakotowans, and the subtribes formerly in the Confederacy each became tributaries to the King of England. At the same time, a racial frontier was delineated between Indian and English settlements, with members of each group forbidden to cross to the other side except by special pass obtained at one of the newly erected border forts. The extent of the Virginia colony opened to patent by English colonists was defined as, all the land between the Blackwater and York rivers, and up to the navigable point of each of the major rivers, which were connected by a straight line running directly from modern Franklin on the Blackwater, northwesterly to the Appomattox village beside Fort Henry, and continuing in the same direction to the Monocan village above the falls of the James, where Fort Charles was built, then turning sharp right, to Fort Royal on the York Pamunkey River. Nakotowans thus ceded the English vast tracts of still uncolonized land, much of it between the James and Blackwater. English settlements on the peninsula north of the York and below the Poropatank were also allowed, as they had already been there since 1640. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> English Civil War and Commonwealth, 1642 to 1660. While the newer, Puritan colonies, most notably Massachusetts, were dominated by parliamentarians, the older colonies sided with the Crown. The Virginia Company's two settlements, Virginia and Bermuda, Bermuda's independent Puritans were expelled as the Eleutheran adventurers, settling the Bahamas under William Sale, Antigua and Barbados were conspicuous in their loyalty to the Crown, and were singled out by the Rump Parliament in an act for prohibiting trade with the Barbados, Virginia, Bermuda and Antigua in October 1650. This dictated that due punishment be inflicted upon the said delinquents, do declare all and every the said persons in Barbados, Antigo, Bermudas and Virginia, that have contrived, abetted, aided or assisted those horrid rebellions, or have since willingly joined with them, to be notorious robbers and traitors, and such as by the law of nations are not to be permitted any manner of commerce or traffic with any people whatsoever, and do forbid to all manner of persons, foreigners, and others, all manner of commerce, traffic and correspondency whatsoever, to be used or held with the said rebels in the Barbados, Bermudas, Virginia and Antigo, or either of them. The Act also authorized parliamentary privateers to act against English vessels trading with the rebellious colonies. All ships that trade with the rebels may be surprised. Goods and tackle of such ships not to be embezzled, till judgment in the Admiralty, two or three of the officers of every ship to be examined upon oath. Virginia's population swelled with Cavaliers during and after the English Civil War. Despite the resistance of the Virginia Cavaliers, Virginian Puritan Richard Bennett was made governor answering to Cromwell in 1652, followed by two more nominal Commonwealth governors. Nonetheless, the colony was rewarded for its loyalty to the crown by Charles II following the Restoration when he dubbed it the Old Dominion. Crown Colony Restoration 1660 to 1775 With the restoration in 1660 the governorship returned to its previous holder Sir William Berkeley In 1676 Bacon's rebellion challenged the political order of the colony While a military failure its handling did result in Governor Berkeley being recalled to England In 1679 the Treaty of Middle Plantation was signed Topic. Williamsburg era The largest and richest and most influential of the American colonies was Virginia, where conservatives were in full control of the colonial and local governments. At the local level, Church of England parishes handled many local affairs, and they in turn were controlled not by the minister, but rather by a closed circle of rich landowners who comprised the parish vestry. Ronald L. Heinemann emphasizes the ideological conservatism of Virginia, while noting there were also religious dissenters who were gaining strength by the 1760s. 
The tobacco planters and farmers of Virginia adhered to the concept of a hierarchical society that they or their ancestors had brought with them from England. Most held to the general idea of a great chain of being, at the top were God and his heavenly host, next came kings who were divinely sanctioned to rule, then a hereditary aristocracy who were followed in descending order by wealthy landed gentry, small, independent farmers, tenant farmers, servants, Aspirations to rise above one's station in life were considered a sin. In actual practice, colonial Virginia never had a bishop to represent God nor a hereditary aristocracy with titles like Duke or Baron. However, it did have a royal governor appointed by the king, as well as a powerful landed gentry. The status quo was strongly reinforced by what Jefferson called feudal and unnatural distinctions that were vital to the maintenance of aristocracy in Virginia. He targeted laws such as entail and primogeniture by which the oldest son inherited all the land. As a result increasingly large plantations, worked by white tenant farmers and by black slaves, gained in size and wealth and political power in the eastern tidewater tobacco areas. Maryland and South Carolina had similar hierarchical systems, as did New York and Pennsylvania. During the Revolutionary Era, all such laws were repealed by the new states. The most fervent loyalists left for Canada or Britain or other parts of the empire. They introduced primogeniture in Upper Canada Ontario in 1792, and it lasted until 1851. Such laws lasted in England until 1926. Topic. American Revolution Topic. Relations with the natives As the English expanded out from Jamestown, encroachment of the new arrivals and their ever-growing numbers on what had been Indian lands resulted in several conflicts with the Virginia Indians. For much of the 17th century, English contact and conflict was mostly with the Algonquian peoples that populated the coastal regions, primarily the Powhatan Confederacy. Following a series of wars and the decline of the Powhatan as a political entity, the colonists expanded westward in the late 17th and 18th centuries, encountering the Shawnee, Iroquoian-speaking peoples such as the Nottoway, Maharan, Iroquois and Cherokee, as well as Siouan-speaking peoples such as the Totello, Saponi, and Okanichi. Topic. Iroquois Confederacy As the English settlements expanded beyond the Tidewater territory traditionally occupied by the Powhatan, they encountered new groups with which there had been minimal relations with the colony. In the late 17th century, the Iroquois Confederacy expanded into the western region of Virginia as part of the Beaver Wars. They arrived shortly before the English settlers, and displaced the resident Siouan tribes. Lieutenant Gov. Alexander Spotswood made further advances in policy with the Virginia Indians along the frontier. In 1714, he established Fort Christana to help educate and trade with several tribes with which the colony had friendly relations, as well as to help protect them from hostile tribes. In 1722, he negotiated the Treaty of Albany. Topic. Lord Dunmore's War Topic. Geography The cultural geography of colonial Virginia gradually evolved, with a variety of settlement and jurisdiction models experimented with. By the late 17th century and into the 18th century, the primary settlement pattern was based on plantations to grow tobacco, farms, and some towns mostly ports or courthouse villages. Topic. Early settlements. The fort at Jamestown, founded in 1607, remained the primary settlement of the colonists for several years. A few strategic outposts were constructed, including Fort Algernon at the entrance to the James River. Early attempts to occupy strategic locations already inhabited by natives at what is now Richmond and Suffolk failed owing to native resistance. A short distance farther up the James, in 1611, Thomas Dale began the construction of a progressive development at Henricus on and about what was later known as Farrar's Island. Henricus was envisioned as possible replacement capital for Jamestown, and was to have the first college in Virginia. The ill fated Henricus was destroyed during the Indian Massacre of 1622. 
In addition to creating the new settlement at Henricus, Dale also established the port town of Bermuda Hundred, as well as Bermuda City sick in 1613, now part of Hopewell, Virginia. He began the excavation work at Dutch Gap, using methods he had learned while serving in Holland. Topic. Hundreds Once tobacco had been established as an export cash crop, investors became more interested and groups of them united to create largely self-sufficient hundreds. The term hundred is a traditional English name for an administrative division of a shire or county to define an area which would support 100 heads of household. In the colonial era in Virginia, the hundreds were large developments of many acres, necessary to support land-hungry tobacco crops. The hundreds were required to be at least several miles from any existing community. Soon, these patented tracts of land sprang up along the rivers. The investors sent shiploads of settlers and supplies to Virginia to establish the new developments. The administrative centers of Virginia's hundreds were essentially small towns or villages, and were often palisaded for defense. An example was Martin's Hundred, located downstream from Jamestown on the north bank of the James River. It was sponsored by the Martin's Hundred Society, a group of investors in London. It was settled in 1618, and Wollstenholme Town was its administrative centre, named for Sir John Wollstenholme, one of the investors. Bermuda Hundred now in Chesterfield County and Flowerdew Hundred now in Prince George County are other names which have survived over centuries. Others included Berkeley Hundred, Bermuda Nether Hundred, Bermuda Upper Hundred, Smith's Hundred, Diggs Hundred, West Hundred and Shirley Hundred and, in Bermuda, Harrington Hundreds. Including the creation of the Hundreds. The various incentives to investors in the Virginia colony finally paid off by 1617. By this time, the colonists were exporting 50,000 pounds of tobacco to England a year and were beginning to generate enough profit to ensure the economic survival of the colony. Topic. Cities, shires, and counties In 1619, the plantations and developments were divided into four incorporations, or cities, sick, as they were called. These were Charles City, Elizabeth City, Henrico City, and James City, which included the relatively small seat of government for the colony at Jamestown Island. Each of the four cities, sick, extended across the James River, the main conduit of transportation of the era. Elizabeth City, known initially as Kikouten, a native word with many variations in spelling by the English, also included the areas now known as Southampton Roads and the Eastern Shore. In 1634, a new system of local government was created in the Virginia colony by order of the King of England. Eight shires were designated, each with its own local officers. Within a few years, the shires were renamed counties, a system which has remained to the present day. Topic. Later settlements In 1630, under the governorship of John Harvey, the first settlement on the York River was founded. In 1632, the Virginia legislature voted to build a fort to link Jamestown and the York River settlement of Chiskeak and protect the colony from Indian attacks. In 1634, a palisade was built near Middle Plantation. This wall stretched across the peninsula between the York and James Rivers and protected the settlements on the eastern side of the lower peninsula from Indians. The wall also served to contain cattle. In 1699, a new capital was established and built at Middle Plantation, soon renamed Williamsburg. Northern Neck Proprietary In the period following the English Civil War, the exiled King Charles II of England hoped to shore up the loyalty of several of his supporters by granting them a significant area of mostly uncharted land to control as a proprietary in Virginia a claim that would only be valid were the king to return to power. While under the jurisdiction of the Virginia colony, the proprietary maintained complete control of the granting of land within that territory and revenues obtained from it until after the American Revolution. The grant was for the land between the Rappahannock and Potomac Rivers, which included the titular Northern Neck, but as time went on also would include all of what is today Northern Virginia and into West Virginia. 
Due to ambiguities of the text of the various grants causing disputes between the proprietary and the colonial government, the tract was finally demarcated via the Fairfax Line in 1746. Topic: <laughs> Government and Law. In the initial years under the Virginia Company, the colony was governed by a council, headed by a council president. From 1611 to 1618, under the orders of Sir Thomas Dale, the settlers of the colony were under a regime of civil law that became known as Dale's Code. Under a charter from the company in 1618, a new model of governance was put in place in 1619, which created a new House of Burgesses. On July 30, 1619, Burgesses met at Jamestown Church as the first elected representative legislative assembly in the New World. The legal system in the colony was thereafter based around the English common law. For much of the history of the royal colony, the formal appointed governor was absentee, often remaining in England. In his stead, a series of acting or lieutenant governors who were physically present held actual authority. In the later years of its history, as it became increasingly civilized, more governors made the journey. The first settlement in the colony, Jamestown, served as the capital and main port of entry from its founding until 1699. During this time, a series of statehouses capitals were used and subsequently consumed by fires both accidental, and in the case of Bacon's Rebellion, intentional. Following such a fire, in 1699 the capital was relocated inland, away from the swampy climb of Jamestown to Middle Plantation, soon to be renamed Williamsburg. The capital of Virginia remained in Williamsburg, until it was moved further inland to Richmond in 1779 during the American Revolution. Economy <inaudible> 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 The entrepreneurs of the Virginia Company experimented with a number of means of making the colony profitable. The orders sent with the first colonists instructed that they search for precious metals, specifically gold. While no gold was found, various products were sent back, including pitch and clapboard. In 1608, early attempts were made at breaking the continental hold on glassmaking through the creation of a glassworks. In 1619, the colonist built the first ironworks in North America. In 1612, settler John Rolfe planted tobacco obtained from Bermuda during his stay there as part of the third supply. Within a few years, the crop proved extremely lucrative in the European market. As the English increasingly used tobacco products, tobacco in the American colonies became significant economic force, especially in the tidewater region surrounding the Chesapeake Bay. Vast plantations were built along the rivers of Virginia, and social, economic systems developed to grow and distribute this cash crop. Some elements of this system included the importation and employment of slaves to grow crops. Planters would then fill large hogsheads with tobacco and convey them to inspection warehouses. In 1730, the Virginia House of Burgesses standardized and improved quality of tobacco exported by establishing the Tobacco Inspection Act of 1730, which required inspectors to grade tobacco at 40 specified locations. Culture Ethnic origins England supplied the great majority of colonists. In 1608, the first Poles and Slovaks arrived as part of a group of skilled craftsmen. In 1619, the first Africans arrived, though the concept of racially based slavery did not evolve for several decades. In the mid-17th century, French Huguenots arrived in the colony. In the early 18th century, German specialists arrived to establish the Germana settlement. Scots and Scots-Irish settled on the Virginia frontier. Some Welsh arrived including the ancestors of Thomas Jefferson. Topic: <inaudible> Servitude and Slavery. With the boom in tobacco planting, there was a severe shortage of laborers to work the labor-intensive crop. One method to solve the shortage was through the usage of indentured servants. By the 1640s, legal documents started to define the changing nature of indentured servants and their status as servants. In 1640, John Punch was sentenced to lifetime servitude as punishment for trying to escape from his master Hugh Gwynne. This is the earliest legal sanctioning of slavery in Virginia. 
After this trial, the relationship between indentured servants and their masters changed, as planters saw permanent servitude a more appealing and profitable prospect than seven-year indentures. As many indentured workers were illiterate, especially Africans, there were opportunities for abuse by planters and other indenture holders. Some ignored the expiration of servants' indentured contracts and tried to keep them as lifelong workers. One example is with Anthony Johnson, who argued with Robert Parker, another planter, over the status of John Casser, formerly an indentured servant of his. Johnson argued that his indenture was for life and Parker had interfered with his rights. The court ruled in favor of Johnson and ordered that Casser be returned to him, where he served the rest of his life as a slave. Such documented cases marked the transformation of Negroes from indentured servants into slaves. In the late 17th century, the Royal African Company, which was established by the King of England to supply the great demand for labor to the colonies, had a monopoly on the provision of African slaves to the colony. As plantation agriculture was established earlier in Barbados, in the early years, slaves were shipped from Barbados where they were seasoned to the colonies of Virginia and Carolina. Religion In 1619, the Anglican Church was formally established as the official religion in the colony, and would remain so until shortly after the American Revolution. Establishment meant that local tax funds paid the parish costs, and that the parish had local civic functions such as poor relief. The upper-class planters controlled the vestry, which ran the parish and chose the minister. The church in Virginia was controlled by the Bishop of London, who sent priests and missionaries, but there were never enough, and they reported very low standards of personal morality. By the 1760s, dissenting Protestants, especially Baptists and Methodists, were growing rapidly and started challenging the Anglicans for moral leadership. <laughs> <laughs> Education and literacy The first printing press used in Virginia began operation in Jamestown on June 8, 1680, though within a few years it was shut down by the Governor and Crown of England for want of a license. It was not until 1736 that the first newspaper, the Virginia Gazette, began circulation under printer William Parks of Williamsburg. The Sims Eaton Academy, started in 1634, became the first free public school in America. Private tutors were often favored among those families who could afford them. For most of the 17th century, a university education for settlers of Virginia required a journey to England or Scotland. Such journeys were undertaken by wealthy young men. In the early years, many settlers received their education prior to immigrating to the colony. In 1693, the College of William and Mary was founded at Middle Plantation, soon renamed Williamsburg. The college included a common school for Virginia Indians, supplemented by local pupils, which lasted until a 1779 overhaul of the institution's curriculum. The college, located in the capital and heart of the Tidewater region, dominated the colony's intellectual climate until after independence. After 1747, some Virginians began to attend institutions at Princeton and Philadelphia. Generations began to move west into the Piedmont and Blue Ridge areas. It is in this region of Virginia that two future Presbyterian colleges trace their origins to lower-level institutions founded in this time period. First, what would become Hampton Sydney College was founded in 1775, immediately prior to the American Revolution. Likewise, Augusta Academy was a classical school that would evolve into Washington and Lee University though would not grant its first bachelor's degree until 1785. Topic. See also Topic References Topic Further reading Topic External links Library of Congress Evolution of the Virginia Colony 1610 to 1630